So, welcome to one of my favourite chapters in all of part 3. In order to win this one, we need to set all supplies on fire within a very generous 15 turns, although I believe we need to take 10 turns for maximum bonus experience. So, the supplies are these piles of crates and um, jars here. So, they're not marked out on the map that you can see if you check conditions, so you'll need to remember exactly where they are. So, it's... that's... So there are these two down here, this one here, these are not supplies. I, I love the terrain category miscellaneous. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but that shows up quite a lot in this game, and I just find it kind of funny, when the map designers are like, eh, we're not even going to bother making a specific terrain type for this. Uh, so yeah, so those are supplies too, there's supplies here and here. So they're kind of spread out all over the place, and for that, even if you don't plan on training Ha, you'll probably want Ha here, because he's the only flyer you have. And being flying helps a lot when it comes to burning supplies. Now, anyone can burn supplies. It's not like that uh, whole Critical Role incident where they send someone into a mansion to burn something and then they realise they don't have any form of fire. No, anyone can burn supplies. So you just need to reach all of these spots with any character you want. It's a pretty interesting and fun victory condition. So as for enemies, we've got a bunch of just um, relatively basic enemies. There's nothing really all that dangerous on this map, except the killer bow can be a little difficult to deal with. That's got a storm sword. There's nothing particularly terrifying among the enemy's weapons. There is, however, the boss. Now, the boss is actually pretty unique because he is a druid. This is our first instance of dark magic in this game. And it will be one of our only instances of dark magic in this game. Also, this is funny. Uh, Mid-level dark magic, it is, in fact, the lowest level of dark magic in this one. So there's nothing below C ranks. There also are not even, like, there isn't even models for first level shamans. It's just druids. So, Druid. Scholars of complex enigmas of dark magic. Their art has few practitioners and fewer masters. That is very true. You will very rarely fight Druids in this game. And that makes this guy pretty memorable. He also has a drawable Shade Scroll. And killing him is not required, so you'll want to make sure that you get this one before you burn all of the supplies. Speaking of things that you want to do before you burn the supplies, these tents here, some of them are open and you can actually visit them. Well, rather, you're essentially looting them. Uh, or intimidating the people inside into giving you all their items. So there are some pretty good items to find in these tents, so make sure you visit them. However, some of these tents like this one, if the front of the tent doesn't say visit, I believe it's this tent and this tent that are like that, you can't actually visit the tent, so you can safely ignore those ones. Also on this map is a third faction called the War Horses, and that's exactly what it says on the tin, a bunch of horses. I love how they even have affinities. But yes, these horses all have the exact same stats, and I like how they even made a generic horse class. Apparently, Kanto only works if you're a horse with a rider. And, uh, Con 20 and Weight 20. Anyway, you can do some interesting calculations with, um, characters' weights based on knowing exactly how much a horse weighs. Also, race question marks. Interesting. So anyway, if anyone wanted to know what the stats of a generic horse are in Fire Emblem, this is that. The horses are kind of weird. So they, say, so they said in the intro to this chapter that you should release the horses to create chaos in the enemy camp, and you can do that by breaking down the doors. However, it's highly recommended that you don't do this. Reason being, the horses are all worth bonus experience, but because I feel like causing chaos in the enemy camp was too complicated a condition for the programming to keep track of, the bonus experience is simply tied to the horses being alive. So ironically, the best way to secure your bonus experience is to not release the horses. and do the exact opposite of what Titania suggested. So anyway, let's choose our characters. Last chapter we could choose 16, now we are down to 11. So, yeah, enjoy that huge deployment while it lasts. It's not gonna last for long. So now, if I want to bring people like Nephany or Ha, and I think those, actually no, I want Heather. I want Heather for a very specific reason, but I'll, not even sure if I'll get to use Heather in this one. So I'm gonna need to kick out three people, which is unfortunate. Alright, so it's either Rice or Mist. Thing is, Rice is probably going to be more useful offensively than Mist is. The problem is, I want to grind Mist and Void support. And here's the thing, if I wasn't trying to grind Mist and Void support, so I would kick out Void now. But I kind of want them to get to an A before the end of Part 3. So I might have to keep Void here, and that means I need to kick out two more people. Hmm. Kicking out Oscar's usually really bad, because he's great for being mobile and burning the supplies. But, 
I want Har and I want Nefity. And if I want Heather, like, again, I would kick out Void if I had the choice, but I'm grinding his support to Miss, so... Okay, this is really bad. I normally love bringing shit into this chapter. He's normally incredibly helpful, but I may have to kick him out to bring Heather. Okay, repositioning time. By the way, there is a hidden treasure in this chapter, but once again, it's just a coin, and I think it's like at the bottom of a horse pen here, which is kind of weird. One of the stable boys must have dropped some loose change. Anyway, I'm going to have Har start around here, because he's going to be flying all the way up this side of the map. Har's going to go there. Gatry's going to head as far forward as he can. I think I'm okay with Solari staying on Gatry for now. Also, Gatry's got half affinity, which is nice. I could probably put Solari on Sorin if I really wanted to. Definitely's going to go there. Yeah, I definitely want Rolf to head as far forward as he can as well. And as for everyone else... I think I'm pretty much fine on the rest of my positions, so I'm going to go ahead and save here, and then we'll begin the supply burning operation. Let's do this. Okay, first things first, and we still get proud fight, which is awesome. First things first, I want to whack you immediately, because otherwise... Like, I just want to get this out of the way now, in case you crit me. Because if you do crit me, that's less time to restart. The background of this map is really cool too. I love the wooden stakes, or I guess you call that a palisade fence. These fences are indestructible, unlike the ones in Age of Empires 2, which are incredibly pathetic. I almost never bother building palisade walls in that game. They're only really useful in the Dark Ages when you have access to no other kinds of walls, because anything can just break them really easily. Uh, anyway, Ha will stay here, and thanks to Kanto, he can burn supplies and then run, so that's a useful thing to ability to have. That's not quite enough damage, is it? But I could... Alright, idea. So, first things first, is Titania is going to use her universal Polax key on this door. Thankfully all the doors in this map are very easy to break open, so if you don't bring Heather, you're still pretty much fine here. And next step is... Uh, you can't shove Void. Um... I kind of want to hit this guy a little bit with someone ranged, and then finish him off with Rolf, but... I guess I could have Little Lord Ike attack here, although I have a feeling that Little Lord Ike's going to crit, especially since he does have a bond with Titania, I remember, right? And if I crit here, it's not the end of the world. Wow, you guys do pathetic damage. But I do want to make up a lot of experience on Rolf in this chapter. Because he is in that point where he needs experience badly, but he also levels up better with regular experience than with bonus experience. That is the one downside of the new bonus experience system. In Path of Radiance, if you had a character who starts out really underleveled, like for example Astrid, you could just shove bonus experience into them until they're up on the same level as the rest of your army. You can't really do that in Radiant Dawn. I could have Gatry right in there. You're both level 15. I don't think she's at much risk of dying. I think I'll even go for the Killer Lance. Even though I'm probably not going to kill you. I need to crit both of these to kill you. Well, that's one crit. I like that flick in the air with the Lance, though. Well, I got both crits. Nice. So that's the way open. That means that Gatry could probably run straight through that gap, but yes he can, however I do want to... I mean, alternatively Sorin could end up killing this guy. He is in Ike support range, so that does mean plus one Mike, just like it did in Path of Radiance. And the question is, do I want Nefany in that gap, or Gatry in that gap? This song is still really good. I know that I've probably said that many, many times. It's also kind of funny, the... The map here is reminding me a little bit of the camp, uh, the way the camp in Land of Dragons looks in Kingdom Hearts 2. Anyway, though, uh, I guess Void and Mist will just hang back a bit. Okay, I had a slight idea, so I can't do it this turn. Because shoving actually does give support points, so I feel like at this point the best way for me to grind with some Void supports is to have the two of them shove each other repeatedly. Which is not a very good way to build up a relationship, but it works in this game, apparently. Obviously, the enemies didn't expect to be attacked here, but, um, Bayona seems to like it. 
I kind of respect this guy because he hates the Senators as much as we do. And he's also pretty honourable, as you'll see in his boss dialogue. Which is not a personality you expect of a Dark Magic user. Well, I mean, at least, um, it wasn't until, um, also, um, yeah, first turn reinforcements. Now, that bishop there is actually kind of important, because I believe he's a senator, and senators work, um, a little interestingly in this chapter. The pre-chapter dialogue explained that you don't want to kill the senators. That's because the senators are worth bonus experience if they stay alive. However, there's something interesting about the senators, and I really should have picked, um, the steel axe on the hand axe. Well, in fact, if Gage doubles you, you're still gonna die. And he does! I love Speedy Armor Knights. I really love Speedy Armor Knights. Well, I mean, unless they're Meg or, um, or... I was about to say Gwendolyn, but she isn't even that speedy if I remember right. I know, I did do a playthrough of FE6 where I used all three of the Armor Knights, but, um... Anyway, so one annoying thing about this chapter is the horses will just spend their turns running around randomly. So that can be kind of annoying. But anyway, this guy here is a senator. In fact, if you check the conditions... Actually, no, wait, he's not a senator. He's just a regular bishop. No, the senator is down here. The ones that come out of the tent senators. Oh, and they're labeled as senators, so yeah. The senators are interesting because even though killing them is supposed to be bad, they have droppable items to tempt you into killing them. And there's actually a very, very good droppable item from a later senator. But you can always just steal those items with Heather and avoid killing them. So that's what I'm going to try and do. That's why I brought Heather to this map. And her pass skill is going to really come in handy for that. Still kept pass on Heather. Okay, what do I do with Rolf now? We will need to watch out a little bit for these guys. Stealable coin as well. There's a lot here to steal, so like I said, Heather's pretty useful to bring. Ah, uh, Sky Sentinel Bow's not going to actually beat you. So let's see if I can, um, have Void just whack you. No, let's have Void use the... And you still get attacked even if I use the Hand Axe, but at least you're further behind. And I kind of want Void to get hit here so Miss can heal him for some more supports. It's not often that I have to grind supports in this game. The supports are mostly based on the number of chapters characters spend together, but Radium Dawn uses um, that and the standard support system for earlier Fire Emblem games of, um, okay, of gain support points by standing adjacent to each other, fighting together, healing each other, but and this, and this one also shoving each other. I kind of like how the orange bow looks now. My first time really looking at it up close, and nice level up there. That is the benefit of being lower levels. Holy! I am. What the heck is Rolf's strength, bro? I have no words. Okay, thankfully you did rank up your bows, but I think you do need to be an S to use the bow for the next chapter. At least Rolf's almost camp speed, so I can probably start bows experiencing him soon, but seriously, that is incredibly annoying. Uh, right, so I kind of want to heal hard because he's going to be getting attacked by some majors going forward. But I also want to burn this. Although, honestly, I can probably have Heather burn those later or someone else down here. But I kind of like Haar to burn the supplies in Rana. You know what? I think Haar's probably okay not equipping, uh, not healing this turn. Let's see. Let's do a burn and run. Sometimes hard to see your movement squares um, in this um, glass. Anyway, though, speaking of movement squares, let's get your rangers locked in. I kind of want you dead, so well, I also don't want the senator dead. Thankfully, the senators have no weapons, so they can't kill themselves attacking you, which is very good. Can Gatry double that guy with his hand axe? Yes, he can, with perfect accuracy to boot. See, this is why I love speedy generals, that correction also have good strength and perfectly good defense. I'm kind of wondering if any of those fighter skills from heroes, like bold fighter, uh, I'm not sure about special fighter, I guess special fighter uh, in the context of a mainline fire can would increase your crit rate, but, you know, things like bold fighter, um, the, you know, the new fighters. So I forget what the other ones are. Like, Ven was Ventral Fighter one of them? I think Ventral Fighter is one of them. But the, one, the ones that make you automatically double attack in particular, 
because they're actually kind of interesting on generals. There are a lot of reasons why generals in uh, Kusori shall definitely no uh, But I wonder if no clear can shall. Oh yeah, that's because Nephany is technically um, an armored class. Well, she's not actually an armored class per se, but she wears armor, so her weight's a little higher than your average foot soldier. That's exactly where I wanted her to go, which is good. But yeah, armor knights in Heroes are good for a lot of reasons. They usually have amazing stamps to compensate for their bad movement, and the map's really small, so bad movement isn't a big deal. They are those amazing armor buffing skills. I kind of wonder if things like Hone Armor and Hone Cavalry might show up in Three Houses, although like I've said before, Three Houses does appear to be using the, uh, the combat arts system from Echoes, so maybe skills like that won't. Although, someone did see a Wrath icon in the trailer, so maybe traditional skills are in the game. Or Ra the Wrath icon could just be a placeholder. Kind of like how in Echoes, um, there are there is a whole bunch of leftover data from Fates, like some Avatar creation stuff, but a lot of people are like, oh, they plan to have an Avatar in Echoes because of that. No. I'm pretty sure that's just a holdover of using, because most of the time, whenever a game uh, is made on a system that already had another game in the series for that system, they usually just use the same engine. So, for example, uh, like I believe in Pokemon, uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, I think, was built on Ruby and Sapphire's engine, but Emerald was actually built on Fire Red and Leaf Green's engine. And often, um, porting over the engine means you have to port over some stuff, so that's why sometimes you get unused music that's just from an earlier game. Yes, run towards the fire! That's smart! Yeah, good, I think the hand axe. Admittedly, Standard is a pretty dumb in general, but still, I find that kind of funny. Like, oh no, they're all gonna kill me! Run! And then he just runs and sees the supplies on fire. No! And yeah, there will be quite a few reinforcements spawning in this chapter. Okay, you are long overdue for some- Okay, no, I have to shove uh, Heather in order to get there. And I also want to kill you because I don't want Heather to get attacked by- It's probably fine if Heather gets attacked by one of them, because she will only get attacked by one. Finally, some engage who doesn't double. Does double, you know. Okay. Another javelin over there. This chapter overall is not particularly difficult either, but I find it a lot more fun than the last chapter. It has a really unique victory condition, and the map layout is kind of interesting, and there's a lot of optional objectives. That's a very low chance under True Hit. Alright, I really want um, you to be fighting some things because you are Mia, and Mia is pretty cool. Oh, I forgot that Mia and Gage had a support. I only did it in the last part, and I'm recording this right after I recorded the last part, so really I should have remembered. Okay, that's good. I don't usually train this many people during part three as well, so this is kind of an interesting experience for me. I need to remember to shove Heather a little bit. Oh right, Rolf should probably try and kill something. Unfortunately not double you. Maybe Rolf can... Uh... Let's go for this anyway. And this is Rolf purely in the open, and the enemies still have a nice long roll. Yes, you don't need to gain strength to kill things. But yeah, 26 hit rate on someone who's completely in the open is kind of terrible. Alright, oh, so yes, because uh, I have a support between Gatry and Mia, although you actually you can't even get to Gatry. The supplies are also impassable terrain, so. They tend to block off quite a bit of the map. Need to remember to have someone visit that. I was almost called the village with that tent. Now, who finishes this guy off? I guess we'll see. But you know what? I'm not really doing much with Void. Might as well have Void visit here. And by visit, I mean scare the crap out of whoever's inside. And we get the Blossom Scroll. So I told you there was some pretty good loot to be had in this chapter. Blossom works the exact same way it does in Path of Radiance. It reduces your experience gain to 60, I think it's 60% of your normal, or 66% of your normal experience, so two thirds. But uh, to compensate, it can... Sorry, Sean, yes, sorry, Sean, 
uh, to compensate, it um, gives you an increased chance of getting stats and leveling up, and because there's no fixed mode in this game, it always works the exact same way. Basically, it makes your... I mean, it doesn't exactly make your growths follow true hit, but it makes it so that um, whenever you fail to gain a stat upon leveling up, a second random number is rolled to give you a second chance of increasing that stat. Essentially, it reduces your experience gain, but increases growth rates. And what's interesting is that, that a speedrun will intentionally go for the Blossom Scroll here, and not for the reason that you think. They give it to Har, but not for the growth rate increase, because by this point Har's pretty much count everything for you anyway, but for the lowering of experience events, because it takes time for the experience bar to fill up, and Har fights so much that saving time by having him gain less experience from kills makes a huge deal of difference in the speedrun. I find that kind of interesting, the way that certain things can get used in speedruns for reasons that uh, are not their obvious uses. You never think an ability that makes you gain less experience would be useful, but, um, you know, I, I was just watching, a, um, saw an example of that recently, a Nino Kuni, um, not two, a Nino Kuni 1 speedrun, uh, where it may be one of the only RPGs ever where a speedrun actually intentionally sets the tech speed to the slowest tech speed. Because there's a certain, like, it's not really a glitch, but kind of an oddity with the way that the levitation spell works, is that whenever you use levitate, text appears on screen saying, Oliver and friends levitate above the ground and are immune to traps. But if you... You know what, I'm gonna actually say it here. Basically, if you have that, while that text is on screen, enemies can't spawn or get into combat with you, so you just have the text being set to slow, and you have a free period where enemies can't attack you, It's pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, I don't really care about that senator. Now that I've stolen his item, he can just go free. I kind of wanted Rolf to kill you, though. There is at least one more Senator on this map, and that's the Senator that I really want to get Heather to, because he, I'll just say it now, has a white gem, and given the Grail Mercenary's money problems, that white gem is really interesting. So I do like the concept of how, you know, you're not supposed to kill the Senators because they give more bonus experience, but also the Senators are holding valuable items to tempt you into killing them, and you have a choice between experience or items, kind of like with the Volunteers back in Part 2. Except they kind of screwed up because you have Heather and you can just have Heather steal the items and not have to kill the enemy to get them. Also, Ha doesn't care about killer bows at all. I remember in the speedrun of this chapter, you get you kind of station Ha in this corner and you actually don't want him to kill things because that means more enemies attack him and it wastes more time. So anyway, we'll be having another horse phase soon. I've been planning on doing a certain something for the horse phases in this chapter, as I like to call them. Kind of hope you'd attack Har, but oh well. Kind of hope you'd attack Mia, but oh well. Because at this point, Ike just doesn't need experience at all. He's already way too good. Yeah, at this point, um, I definitely want to keep him around here so I can bonus experience him to his next level. But I would also like Rolf to kill some things. I believe the central tent does spawn a few reinforcements eventually, because I think I remember having Shinnon go down there and fight some enemies in that area, eventually. Okay, there are enemies from there, but only one, and a senator, and this is the white gem senator, Heather needs to get to him right now. Thankfully she can zip pretty close to him in one move, which is good. Okay, either I point blank crossbow you in the face, or I just shoot you, and it's probably best if I just shoot you. Even though I don't even need the sky sentinel though. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's not accidentally shoot the senator though, because that would be bad, I need to remember there's also a thunder mage, but uh, there. Ironically, not giving Rolf the killer bow has made him better at critting things. Someone in the comments has been saying that um, in my playthrough of the new mystery of the emblem, the killer bow is also cursed. You gotta remember not to have Heather break the door or lock it, because those horses need to stay in there. 
that's kind of weird that you can control your range for break terrain, but anyway. Again, actually both are equally close to the set there, so I might as well just knife you. Wait a minute, you're not the coin sword master, are you? Anyway, let me check. No, obviously not. I am breaking through the initial rush of enemies faster than I expected, but then again, my... Why didn't I burn those? I am dumb. Well, boy can do it. So that's two supplies on fire. I've got to remember this one. It's sometimes easy to forget. Like, I often forget these supplies here. But there's often at least one set of supplies that I tend to forget about in this chapter. But yeah, I, my last play with this game was on hard mode. And I'm pretty sure that on hard mode, there are actually two longbow snipers up here. I do think there are. they do change the enemy composition a little bit on hard. Not quite to the drastic extent they do in fates, but um, they do change... Or the drastic extent they do in Path of Rims, because yeah, by now I've seen uh, a certain other YouTuber playing um, Maniac Mode Path of Radiance, which is just insane. I kind of want to see a run of Maniac Chapter 22 in Path of Radiance that doesn't Meteor the boss, slash Bolting the boss. I know it would probably be a nightmare. For those wondering, uh, all the priests that you have to avoid killing in that chapter are all bishops, and uh, they're promoted, and most of them can attack you, which is obviously not good. I guess technically Mia needs experience down here a lot more than Gatry does, but I'd probably rather Gatry plug this gap. If I shove Mia, I might be able to get her in them. It's not often that I keep Ike away from the enemies in chapters like this, and that's not enough, which is actually decent for me, because I don't want to get into here. But like I said, Ike at this point is just way too strong, and he's better level up with most experience than regular experience. I will be needing to use Ike quite extensively in the next chapter, though. That one is an interesting one as well, which also has a pretty unique victory condition. Uh, who can shove? Well, Miss can shove me, actually. You know what? Mia's converse dialogues are usually pretty funny. Also, I'm pretty sure Gaytree really likes having someone like Mia talking to him. <laughs> I haven't seen that line before. You'd think Gaytree would have unique dialogue for... Burning and Ike will. I don't really know where Ike will go, but I kind of want Ike to well, actually know where. If Ike fights the boss, that's going to be bad for experience. But I do really, really like Ike's boss conversation here. It really shows that this boss is actually pretty noble. I think I was trying to say it earlier, but I got cut off. Um, I was saying that, you know, being like a noble enemy is not the kind of personality you expect from a dark magic user. I um, mean, I guess the vast majority of dark magic users that you fight in Fire Emblem are aligned with some kind of evil cult, but... It's gonna be interesting, I don't think they ever explain, like, where dark magic comes from in, Red in the Tellius universe. But... Anyway, uh, what I meant to say was that, yeah, I have to actually kill that guy when the supplies. What I meant to say is that the whole thing about dark mages being kind of creepy and being morally ambiguous only really started in Awakening. Because Cadus in FE7 was basically just a bookworm. Um, I mean, he actually, admittedly, he had some pretty creepy stuff in his backstory, but, um, which he does go into in some of his heroes' dialogue. There's a lot of interesting backstory involving the way dark magic works, Caleb in particular. But, yeah, he had some creepy stuff in his backstory, but he was a pretty nice guy. Then you had, um, um, you know, Naimi, his, his grandmother in MP6, and she was basically just a kind old woman. Um, well, not so much to her enemies. I, I love Naimi. Naimi, like, I, I don't like the characters in Epic 6 very much. Another reason why I think it's not my least favorite Fire Emblem games is that I find the majority of the cast painfully bland. But Naimi is... I was reading some of the, like, some of the scripts lately, and I forgot how cool Naimi was. She's a really, really great character. 
I love that chapter where, um, where she pretends to join the enemy and is like, I'm gonna cast this spell that's gonna impede the enemy's progress. You'd better thank me for this. And they're like, oh, sure, yeah, we'll trust you. And then, um, Roy's all like, oh, what we do, we have this river in our way and we can't get through. And then Naomi casts the spell and then all the rivers freeze, letting you cross them freely. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry, was this, this spell wasn't supposed to do that, I assure you. Uh, yeah, Naomi's really great. I think she has some pretty good support conversations as well. People really love Venus, and, well... I was about to say, like, his entire family, but who his family is is kind of a spoiler. I guess I'll cover that if I ever get to, uh, Blazing Sword. But let's just say that the vast majority of Canis' family is now in Heroes. We're only missing a, a very small number of them. Actually, I'd love to see Naomi in Heroes. She, she is pretty great. Something that I think I may have said before is that I feel like there are not as many old lady characters. Like, there needs to be more old lady characters in video games. Anyway, I think Heather is... Is... Oh no, that's two spaces. But maybe I can shove Heather two spaces. I can't quite shove Heather two spaces, okay man, that's not the best. However, this Senator I think I can still get to him pretty quickly because Heather's like very, very badly out moving him. A seven move on Heather and you've only got um, yeah, six, so she's going to catch up to him eventually. However, I might want to whack the killer bow guy. Let me just fly out, poleaxe you, fly back in so the one guard who supplies dies in the end of phase. This chapter is going a lot more smoothly than I expected it to, but then again I am used to the hard mode version where you need to play a lot more cautiously. I seem to remember there being more reinforcements to the hard mode version as well, and uh, like I said, you have to be very careful around the area near the boss because I think there are two longbow snipers there instead of just one. Something that I wish more Fire Emblem games would do is, is do that kind of difficulty, not just by boosting enemy stats, but by... Um, adding different types of enemies, or, um, and, and it's interesting because, um, I have only recently discovered, like, exactly how Hector Hard Mode changes things in FF7, and I still don't particularly enjoy Hector Hard Mode. Sorry, I not doing a lot, but... I'm gonna have to... Uh, maybe I won't have to render my useless for a turn, but I'd rather someone else gets the use Etard here, and next chapter we'll be getting a fresh Etard, and by the time we're even close to breaking either of our Etards, I could get Ragnar, so really just use Etard to your heart's content. There's really no risk of running out of Etard before you need to. But anyway... But yeah, Hector Hard does some interesting things, like, um... Hector Hard value of life is like, oh, I, I heard you like Berserkers, so I put Berserkers all over this entire map, so you could Berserker with your Berserkers. It's kind of a weird example, because most uh, Hector Hard chapters don't think about that weird, but that, that's a particularly strange one. That's not enough, unfortunately. Although, one thing that I really don't like about Hector Hard mode is... I've, I've said a lot of times that I hate uh, FE6's Desert Chapter for being a desert map with Fall of War. And uh, I was like, yeah, good thing they didn't do that again in the series, right? And then some people informed me that yes, on Hector Hard mode, the desert map in FE7 does have Fall of War. Which, ironically, might actually be a good thing, because it means Paint is less likely to slaughter everything on the map uh, before you're ready. Which is, yeah, interesting. Temptation to have Rolf kill a senator rising, but I, I want to get the most experience with him. Rolf is unfortunately very, very behind. I could even try and find the longbowman, though, or the boss. I'd kind of like for him to kill the boss, but like I said, I really, really want Ike to get the boss conversation, because it's a very good boss conversation, if I'm remembering correctly. Most of Ike's boss conversations are good, but this one's actually pretty better for the boss than this Ike. And nice. And double nice. I think that's the first time we've seen Mia kill something with a crit this playthrough, which is interesting. Here's uh, Nefri. 
yeah, like I said, I'm not used to training as many people in um, part three. Because on hard, you do not have that luxury in the slightest. You really don't have that luxury on hard. At this point, I was really just training hard and enemy on my, my, my hard mode run. That's why I... I, I know I, I keep saying it, but part of the fun of Fire Emblem is leveling up characters, and that's part of why I don't enjoy a lot of the hard modes that cut down your experience gain, because that means you can train less people, and that makes it a bit less fun for me. Well, that's not so good. But I wouldn't have one-shotted the Killer Bow Guy. I got rid of the Killer Bow Guy um, for Heather, by the way, not for her. It was mostly for Heather's benefit, just in case she wanted to train them later. Once again, Ha levels up without me really trying. That is camp skill, but I believe his strength camp is 28 or even 29, so he's nowhere near camp in that stat. Yeah, I probably won't end up playing FE6 Hector hard because it's not really my kind of thing. I will probably play Hector normal if I don't end up doing a playthrough of that game, though, because I like Hector mode a lot more than Elliot mode. And not just because it has extra Hector and Leadership Tease moments. Well, I mean, it's mostly because it has extra Hector and Ninja Tees. Yeah, I really, really like the Hector and Ninja As I've probably said many times before. And that's that guy down. That's a level up for Mia. If she gains less than three, I will regret that I didn't bonus experience her for this level. Less than three. But Mia does have pretty solid defense for a Swordmaster. I would have liked her for her to camp skill though, because that would mean um Alright, I need to Ugh. I just realized, yeah, Heather is on a corner, so she can't actually get shoved and uh, that's annoying. And if I rescue drop Heather, then yeah. But you are actually pretty blocked if uh, you go there and I'll set roll around there. Yeah, what I want to do is I actually want to lure the, um, the sniper to the edge. So I might actually send Mike here, just to make sure that sniper goes there. You gotta remember that Elf Under Mage actually being a bit of a threat on um, hard mode. In fact, there might have been a second Elf Under Mage there. I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, Nephany's not getting a lot of experience here, but she um, is better off bonus experience at this point, and I would so is Soren. There's, yeah, there's two more tents. I need to remember to visit this tent before I end the chapter. I, I often like to have Ha do that. And before I do anything else, because I can very easily just burn that later. This guy is weird. He doesn't tend to attack you very often. I guess because he realizes that his speed is terrible and that Ha will just destroy him. It's funny, I was planning on going on a tangent about victory for the series here, but this map has gone on for like a much shorter time. Than, it, than I expected, and also there's quite a lot to talk about in this chapter, which I like, because, yeah, I like the fact that I'm not needing to go on as many tangents in this game as I used to, um, as I did in Path of Radiance, mainly due to this game being, um, a bit more substantial difficulty-wise, and the chapters being a lot more interesting, and me getting more things to say about them. Yeah, I, I do like Radiance a lot more than I like Path of Radiance, for reasons that I've already explained a few times. They can start on Grand Yeah, I gotta remember this though. Gotta remember that. I mean, logically, Soren should be able to just meet all the supplies, but that is not gonna work. Plus, I need to save his Meteor for later. I mean, I really only need to save two uses of Meteor for reasons I've already explained, but still. Okay. I was hoping that you didn't do that, because that means that Heather is now in range of a longbow, and with 21 crits against her, uh, her luck's decent. I don't particularly want Mike to... actually, wait a minute. Oh, I wasn't even in range to lure him with Ike, I underestimated how many spaces were there. Yeah, blame that fence for looking a little bigger than it actually is. 
So let me just grab you. And by you, I mean the white jam. And... Yeah, the longbow can't even shoot. Actually, my longbow can shoot in the field, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Might as well not even put the wind edge. And now, we... You know, let's have Gage, because Gage is already, again, he, he needs bonus experience now, not regular experience. Let's visit this, and is this the really, really good item? <laughs> yes, it is! This is our first Master Crown. Master Crowns allow you to promote to third tier if you're level 10 or above in second tier. Now, Master Crowns are actually a very interesting item because their functionality was changed... Well, I mean, their functionality wasn't exactly changed in the English version, but it, it is a little different than it was in the Japanese version. So, in the Japanese version, Master Crowns were the only way to promote to third tier. But in the English version... And I'm actually going to send this there so Boyd can actually shove him. In the English version, you can also... Uh, get to level 20 and gain 100 experience in second tier to promote to third tier. That was not an option in the Japanese version. So in the Japanese version, you could not use bonus experience to go to third tier. And because of that, Master Crowns were a lot more valuable in the Japanese version. And in fact, because they're less valuable in this version, uh, the English version, you know what, for now I'm actually just going to put Coction up on par, because he's going to head into the bosses area soon. In the English version, They actually remove some of the obtainable master crown. Ike is rescuing someone, and still you only have an 8 hit rate on him. I mean, you are shooting at 3 range of the longbow, but still. So anyway, some of the obtainable master crowns were removed and replaced with other items like arm scrolls, which is, like I said, kind of interesting. I don't think that's enough. No, that's definitely not enough. But I could just do this first and then move. But that might result in... THAT HAPPENING! Which is not what I wanted! You know what I think I'll do? I'm gonna actually have... And I love how the Paladin just eventually lowers their act. That's a really unlikely level up for Titania. But what I might do is, I might actually have Ike go for a special boss conversation against the boss. Without a Wind Edge equipped, he's going to go ahead and drop Heather. And then I'm going to have Rolf fight the boss. Yeah, I want to see that boss conversation with Ike, so let's just go ahead and do that. Is Rolf supporting anyone? Yeah, he is, isn't he? He's supporting... Okay, so it's at about this point that, let's see, so the boss can't reach that heal hedge, and yes, Ha can. So Ha's gonna go ahead and burn those, and head on over here. Alright, Titania was also someone that I was training in my hard mode file. Now let's burn that. Gotta remember not to burn everything before the end of the map, and you also need to remember that you can still burn this from this side. Sometimes it's easy to forget that. But now I only have one set of supplies, and I love how this map look, uh, looks at all the supplies are burning. You can see the embers in the air. And uh, I also love how if you pause, you can kind of see the fires on the screen. Is anyone else? Instead, I think I will get a little bit of uh, support grinding. Oh. I hate when the sentinels do that. I hate when they block off that tense. Oh, that's a cool line from Ike 2. So yeah, I definitely wanted to show that. That's one of my favorite boss conversations. This guy also has quite a bit of accuracy. And we're seeing dark magic for the first time. Can everyone see that they kept Worm as Worm in this game? In fact, I think all of the, um... 
all of the dark tones have the same name as they do in the Japanese version. And I think all of them are biblical except for word. Okay, I guess some of my other characters will be getting some action here. I was worried this map was getting a little boring, but um, I do only have one more turn for Maxim Pro's experience. Thankfully the Senator should oh there's a second Senator there. Which is unfortunate. It's a time like these when I wish you could rescue enemies. So I want that Senator gone, but I also really don't want this Senator to stand in front of the tent as well. As you'd expect, Mike just obliterates that guy. Let's I might actually set my back a little bit, and... Rolf is not doubling you. That is unfortunate. And that's... Yeah, so Dark Magic actually hits pretty hard. Also, this guy does have a really, really good, um... Um... Well, not really, really good, but pretty decent magic stat. I don't think I'll... Actually, I might be able to get Gatry to support range. Thank you, Celerity. And that corner is... Yes, it is attackable by the mages, so I'll need to look out that. But this should be support range. I do have mist on hand to heal though. So, like I said before, I really respect this guy. Especially like with his... I know that it's kind of a thing in the series to say, oh, like, the enemies are always really ugly, but... You have this guy, who's a pretty honourable guy, even though he looks that way. So I don't think that's always true. That's like one HP off the corner. I'm gonna have to go and hit you with Titania. I don't think the hand axes have better hit rate. There are some games in the series where hand axes have terrible hit rates. Speaking of terrible, though, Titania's been getting some really bad level ups lately. I'm glad that I'm not planning on taking her to endgame in this run. She might end up hitting third tier though, just because she tends to hit third tier without even trying most of the time. Yeah, because usually Titania's camped something by now. I mean, usually she's long since camped something by now. And I guess I can just... Or I could use the crossbow so I can actually counter the other guy. That is a use of crossbows. They are kind of weak, but they do let you counter at one range. Some of the archers don't usually get outside of Echoes. You can even see the embers in the... Um, battle background, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I really like the way that they, they actually take into account the maps. Like, what's happening on the map in the animations in this one. Um, right. And then I really, 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 really need to get Mia. You know, right now I kind of need Bandage. In fact, I may actually need to rescue Mia with or I could just trust Mia to dodge both of those attacks. She is in, although her gauge of support is, yeah, no evasion bonus. Now I kind of want to fight the that guy and not the javelin guy, because if someone gets hit by the javelin and gets hit by the other guy, he will probably die. At least I'm getting a little bit of use out of Soren here. Didn't expect Soren to be. <laughs> I think that's Soren's first cancel, and it's completely pointless, obviously. I'm glad that none of the enemies intentionally attack horses. Okay, she just thought of something. I... Oh, you know, alternatively, this might end up saving me as life. Although that might also mean the boss attacks Har, which would be really terrible. Definitely don't want the boss attacking Har, especially if he also gets attacked by the... the that guy. Also, let's not press burn, because if I do, the chapter is over and I miss the item from there. If I go there, how much Kanto improvement does Har have? I, like, I wish he could Kanto back there, but I'm not really sure what the proof I don't know if it's counting the spaces over there, or if it's counting like the total number of traversable squares, which would make that like there. 
Now I'm left kind of wishing that Ha still had his hammer. Well, that's not exactly his hammer. Where did... No, I don't think I even bought the hammer in part two. I know that in the speedrun, by this point, the hammer had basically become Ha's signature weapon because of all the generals that he has to fight. Okay, so the question now is... I need to trust Mia. I believe in Mia. Come on, Mia. We're not failing this after we've come so far. Um, I might as well shove you. Please don't stand on the tent. Thank you. Wait, what? Oh, okay. I didn't expect you to do that. But I really want me to dodge this and she crawled with you. I like how she's doing exactly enough damage to kill off most of these mages, but... Okay, I didn't expect the boss to do that. But he did go closer to Rolf. I wonder if Rolf can actually get to him. In fact, I'm pretty sure Rolf can get to him now. <laughs> Good time to break the image. Um, I think Nep and the Ease are a javelin. So... Well, I mean, I feel like, yeah, you, you know Soren will kill you, that's why you can go for Soren. Nephany hasn't done much in this chapter, but what little she has done has been amazing. That's what I was afraid of, because if, um, I mean, I'm not afraid now, but if the thunder had hit, this might have been... And unfortunately, no wind edge anymore. I was hoping for you to attack roll. Which is why I equipped the... Crossbow. So now I just need to, although that will require an extra turn because cars in the best position to burn the supplies here. Are you serious? I get that you don't want me looting the tents, but come on! I don't think there's really any way that I can, I mean, I need to kill you and the boss, and then kill you with Titania or something, and even though Titania's speed is not good, so she won't be able to double you. Uh, is this too? No, it's not too heavy for you. Uh, and I don't even have anyone with longbows to shoot you. Uh, that's really, really annoying. All right, Brock doesn't even double the boss anyway. Um, okay, so... New plan. We're probably not in the this turn. 20 and. Gangtree doesn't even double the life. So, Wind Edge Me is probably my best bet against you. I hate when the enemies block that tent. Now, come on, a death or quick. No. I'm... Wait a minute, let me see. No, that's less accuracy. And Titania could still end up critting because... I wouldn't blame her if she did. No, no. That was incredibly unlucky, but I'm glad that happened because that is a really cool dodge animation. I forgot that druids dodge like that. You can probably tell I don't see this guy dodge off of it. That is a very, very cool dodge animation. Seriously, that is amazing. I forgot how cool that was. I wish more mages in the series had dodge animations like that. That's just, that is so cool. Alright, I do have to watch out for you. Because if I go there, Rolf could potentially get attacked by three things. That is, that is a, I, I can't get over that. That is a really cool dodging animation. Although the, the Druid and Shaman dodge animation in the GTA games are pretty cool too. They kind of just phase themselves out of existence for a bit. What is this? I... My luck is a bizarre beast that cannot be explained by mortal knowledge. 
because I don't even want to begin to imagine how much below average Rolf's strength is now. I think he's only gained strength once in all of his levels, and that's crazy because he has one of the best strength throws in the game. Let me just quickly check. No, you still can't get to Har. But I do want you to stop healing, so... Aha! You have a quicker staff, and that means you can't heal with light magic. Finally, the annoying thing about equipping staffs is actually working in my favor. Or rather, working against the enemy. So this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would, but... I am just out of range, thankfully. I mean, there is a chance that Mia gets hit, kills that guy, and then gets hit by the boss and dies, but that not happen. Let us continue doing that as well. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could use the Master Crown Sword right now, but it's, it's not necessary. It's still really hate it when the enemy sat in front of that tent. Yeah, at this point, there really isn't much the rest of my characters can do. Oh yeah, the Senators will try and leave the map, which is good because it means they won't be here to block the tents. Oh! Crap, I forgot about that. Yeah, of course you'd do that. Yeah, at least you aren't doubling. Interesting how that spell looks different when used at range than it does in melee. At least as far as I can tell. And now you have even less hit rate because fire rhythm, I think. Nice. That's still not enough. That is enough. I love Sword Masters. Have I mentioned that I love Sword Masters? It's funny that uh, two of my favorite classes are Sword Masters and Generals, and they're pretty much exact opposites of each other. One thing that I find hilarious about this chapter is that in the speedrun, uh, you actually need the horses to move in a very specific way. Otherwise, uh, I can double this. Uh, and I can't really get into time yet because I can move. Uh, I really want Rolf to get the boss kill though. But I'm pretty sure it's time to is... Yep, she is dying, so. No. I mean, and let. Oh no, no, wait. I, I know for a fact Pike does kill with the wind edge. Mia might not, though. Oh, but I can't even shove Mia. You, oh, you, you double void, don't you? Pretty sure you double void. Can't even shove you. This is a bit of a predicament. Unless I somehow super, super shove chain Mist to heal Titania. Which, ironically enough, may be my best option right now. I really want Rolf to get the boss kill here. So, Operation Super 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 Shove Mist has begun. I feel so bad for Mist now. Oh, I can't shove her any further because Ike is standing in the way. Wait, no, I can't. I can have Ike um, continue the Super Super Shove train. Okay, and that's as, bit, as much as I can do except for you kill Mist. You don't double Mist at the very least. But... 33 attack versus, uh, miss survives, that's fine. Can't hit the as well. This chapter would actually be a, a lot more difficult if the enemy could douse the fires. That would be interesting too, but, um, maybe that would, might make this a little bit more compl uh, complicated than it needs to be. It would actually be a kind of cool concept, though, if the enemy could douse the fires. Actually, wait a minute. I need to check something. Because obviously, I don't want Rolf to die here. Hmm. Maybe what's best is. Because I'm not finishing it this turn anyway, so maybe what's best is if I instead. Take you out. Heal. Roll doesn't have Volmerate. I'm pretty sure Wolf doesn't have Volmerate. But Titania or Harmite? 
Okay, thinking on the fly. Let's, uh... Oh, Rolf doesn't roll away, that's fine. Um, anyway, let's... Please, someone still poleaxe is. Yes, it is, good. And I might even put Har in front of the tent, just to make absolutely sure the boss isn't going to just run on top of the tent uh, before I can visit it. Oh, I, I can't do that anyway. But I mean, he's not running onto the tent anyway. I'll equip the crossbow just in case, but he's probably going to attack Har. I could have Soren fight those generals, but I don't think I want to. Yep, I called it. Now, depending on how I do this, I may be able to have Tatania visit the village and then R go the supplies in the same turn. Oh, right, no, it does look the same. I just couldn't really see those dark, like, rain line things from. Okay, Nephany's here now, although she will most likely put this guy to death. Oh, that's a really high critical rate. Let's not go for that. Um, Miss Rolf... Nope! Definitely not Miss Rolf tag team. I'm, I'm actually taking a lot more turns than I usually take in this capital, but, um... Let's just... Yeah, might as well go for the best hit rate that I have. This guy is going to die this turn one way or another. Mostly the experience, but the Shade Scroll is nice, there's a nice bonus too. Nice dodge there. Well, oh, that's a perfect hit rate, let's go for that. And watch this level up on Rolf if he does get one, not be worth it. Oh, I didn't quite get a level up. I still respect you. I guess I can get a bit of extra healing experience. And I'm ending this next turn regardless of anything else, so let's just visit this. And that's all we get. Hammer and Staff, though, which is, uh, in this game, I don't know, I mean, in a lot of games I kind of find the Hammer and Staff quote-unquote too awesome to use, right? I guess it's pretty effective on Siege Tones in this one. I'll just say that there's something very, very late into this game that makes the Hammer and Staff not all that necessary. But before then, there are some pretty decent, um, I mean, at this point I could probably just let my horses out, but I'm not going to do that. I like them to stay in their hands. I guess I can have Mia get a little bit more experience here. I've definitely got the half of turn bonus experience, but all the rest of the bonus experience here, like I'll have both the Senator surviving and all the horses surviving, as logical as that is. I think if you do release the horses, then the enemies will attack them and it will distract them, but I've never released the horses before because it's more effective just to leave them in their hands. Forgot how me was doing experience wise. Oh, I'm not quite on the clock. And that should just about seriously all strength is probably one of it should be. That should just about do it. Don't think I have anyone who can try for the item, so I suppose Boyd can shove this one more time. 
and finish. Yep, let's get out of here before Zelgius comes. Speaking of Zelgius. Doubling Ranulf, you must be a really fast general. So, in the extended script, Ranulf has another line here that is very, very significant. But, it is cut from this version. Opening movie stock footage! And it doesn't fit at all because that, um, that animation was clearly taking place near the river, whereas this is on top of a mountain, so I always found that very weird. Yeah, you guys fought alongside each other in the last war. If only very shortly. Yep, this is part of our plan. The great thing about starting fires is the smoke is a pretty effective signal. Yeah, our entire plan here hinges on us not fighting Zelgius. Respect between fellow commanders. Always nice when that kind of thing happens. Of course, it's only temporary. First Scrimmier, now Zelgius. Ranulf is getting beaten up pretty badly in this part. I like Ranulf just really blunt, no. I think it's implied that he just passes out right after saying that. Oh, I didn't even get the turn bonus at all, wow. Uh, but yeah, the senators are worth 500 each, and the horses are worth, I think, like 200 each. There's eight horses total. So, our plan seems to have been a success. But, you know, Zelgius, this is probably not going to set him back very much. Next time, we'll find out what Bednyon's counter plan is.